Welcome to HR.com Live. This podcast is produced by HR.com, the number one destination to help 1.7 million HR executives maximize human potential and drive extraordinary business results. Good afternoon and welcome to HR.com Live. My name is Dr. Heidi Scott and I'm the Chief Learning Officer here at HR.com. My goal is to ensure that our learning ecosystem remains innovative by equipping HR professionals to be smarter so they can navigate their careers better. I'll be your host for today. In this episode, we're going to be talking with Andy Gutman about creating engaging workplaces. As president of Southfield, a Michigan-based Farbman group, Andy oversees a myriad of Farbman companies. It's more than 25 million rentable square feet of commercial real estate, and it's 200 plus employees. He's a busy guy. With focus on client service, customer satisfaction, and maximizing asset value, he derives pleasure from problem solving and finding opportunities that provide appreciated value, additional revenue, and cost savings for the organization and its clients. Andy cares about people, processes, community, and is committed to the corporate vision of operating with ethics and integrity. Andy also is a songwriter and author, and he's licensed numerous songs to companies for commercial use and is a proud author of four children's books. Before diving in, let's take a look at today's newsflash and funding update. And now back to our discussion about creating engaging workplaces. So Andy, I'm thrilled to have you on the the show today. And this topic of work-life balance is one that's personally always been like near and dear to my heart, probably because it remains an issue, an elusive uh, pursuit of work-life balance. And it's a hot topic today, pretty much among all folks, including our millennials. And I'm just curious, how, how do you see companies catering to this need that we have today? Well, you know, thank you for asking. And, and also, thanks so much for having me on today. It's, it's such an honor to be on your show. Uh, you know, I think in today's society, now more than ever, uh, it's important to have that flexibility if you want to maintain employees. And with unemployment so very low, uh, you've got to keep your employees happy. And what I've always found is having, uh, you know, productivity versus watching the hours that someone works is so much more important. It's about getting the job done. And it always should have been about getting the job done and getting it done right, as opposed to having FaceTime, having to be at a certain location, having to be there for certain hours. Now, some jobs still to this day, you know, your security guard, you don't want them having work-life balance where they're working from home necessarily, because that doesn't secure your building. But most jobs, you can find a way to make that work. So you can give people the happiness and you know the happiness that they want and the productivity that you need, and it becomes a balance for the employer. But now more than ever, it's so important. And you know, I think back to the days uh, when I was younger in business, and you know, my employer would be at the door at eight o'clock, which is when we started, and making sure everyone came in on time and no one left before four thirty. And you know, I found that to be one of those things that people were always skittish and nervous. Uh, you know, if I get there at eight oh one, I'm going to be in trouble. When does it really make that big of a difference? You know, and if you're if you're a working parent trying to get to work on time, sometimes you don't control what happens with traffic. You don't control all these things, but yet it creates you know a less enjoyable work environment when you have to be afraid of those types of issues. And so, you know, I think today we have to be more cognizant of the needs of our people. Have to be more respectful of. Of, you know, the varying things that they have to do in life or want to do. Yeah, I'm just curious, do you see more of that that push or that drive or that, with millennials, a uh, demand or a, like a, an acknowledgement of what I do, however I get it done, doesn't matter, it's that I get results. Do you, do you find that that's like a stronger issue with the younger folks it, we have? It's huge with millennials. Millennials, you know, and I hate to, I hate to put an entire people in a category, but it, there's some truth to that, you know, with every generation. And millennials, they work differently in, in a lot of respects. You know, um, when people go home at night, millennials, sometimes that's when they're just getting started or they're coming back to work after they've had dinner. And, um, you know, they, they work differently. Sometimes uh, they want a quiet area to work. Sometimes they, they want to be able to work from the coffee shop and, and be able to supply that. And, you know, I used to say that millennials want 
all the little games and the and the cool things that free their mind and make them creative thinkers. Um, you know, like having the ability to play a game of ping pong in the middle of the day, uh, de-stress, and then go back to work. And so, you know, you are catering somewhat to this current generation. Uh, but I think everyone wants that. Everyone wants the ability to, uh, you know, if they're going to their kid's soccer game, to be able to do that and then get their work done or get it done in advance. So I think it relates to every generation, but millennials have brought it to the forefront and basically said, we demand these things. And yeah. if you want to keep us happy and employed, uh, you'll give us those things. And I think they're right to to do that. It's It's kind of an impressive thing that they know what they want. Yeah, maybe maybe those of us who are a little bit older always wanted that, but didn't quite feel um, that it was appropriate to articulate. And, and today, it's it's an okay thing. So, Andy, when it comes to uh, unlimited paid time off and and the perk that that can be in recruiting and, and retaining talent, as it encourages work life balance. When I say that phrase, most people say, "What does unlimited paid time off mean?" And I say, well, it means just that. It means unlimited, and it's paid time off. And and as Americans, we oftentimes really struggle with that concept, let alone what it looks like inside of a of an organization being lived out. I'm just curious when we think about that, as you're seeing that, what strategies do you recommend to effectively roll out an unlimited paid time off policy as well as maintain it? Yeah. So, unlimited PTO can be. Uh, it can be unnerving for the employer and the employee both. Uh, what we found, it took us a while to roll out unlimited PTO, and uh, we wanted to be very cautious of that and make sure we rolled it out okay. We we actually had more pushback from employees that didn't want it in the first couple of years when we tried to get it implemented because we had, we had several employees that were pushing for it, um, and employees with uh, you know seniority were were saying, well, what's the benefit? I get a certain number of days right now that others don't get, you know, doesn't that take away from my seniority if, uh, you know, if I don't get that anymore, if there's no difference between what I get and the person on their first day. And so it took a while to get people comfortable that it is really a benefit to you, um, but you have to put some real restrictions around it. And I hate to use the word restrictions, but um, there has to be structure. And so for us, it was saying, you know, you have unlimited PTO, but you everyone in our organization has a backup employee that when you're off, they watch over your portfolio and your work. And so we said you have to make sure your backup employee isn't on PTO the same time you are. You have to make sure that you go through the process of updating them on everything you're working on and make sure it's easily accessible and that all the things that switch over to them occur and that it's that it's fair minded with them as well. Um, our biggest worry early on from employees and what we found is that many are taking less time off than before we had unlimited PTO. And part of that is really their understanding of how the structure works. They're, they're a little more tentative. They, you know, they don't know how many days they get anymore. So they're not really sure. Well, I used to get 25 days or 15 days. And now they're saying, well, you know, I don't know what to do when no one tells me the exact amount I should be entitled to. So uh, we're working on structure there with saying there's got to be a minimum day, a number of days that people have to take off to offset the, you know, the concern that they have of not taking enough off nowadays. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, and that's interesting. We at uh, HR.com have instituted the unlimited paid time off policy. And it's interesting because we're in our first uh, nine months or so, of it and similarly we've got folks uh myself included where i'm like uh i have to I, suddenly i looked at the calendar i was like gosh i i must i'm telling my, my team you must take some time off i want i want you to bring the best of who you are to work which means go take a break go take go do whatever you want to do and come back you know charged and ready to go i had to then move that out myself which um, I think is um, maybe a maybe a best practice for for those of us that really like to work. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, you really you do have to pay attention to it and, and make sure you're taking the time off because the intention of it is so good. You know, you can as long as you get your work done, you can take time off that you need and enjoy life. And it's such a it's such a trust based concept 
The employer is trusting the employee to not abuse it. The employee is trusting the employer that they're sincere. And, and yet you have to work together to make sure that people are actually using it for the intention, uh, which has been a tougher thing. We've, you know, in our implementation, we're probably a little over a year into it and I have a lot of lessons that are learned um, in making sure that the structure forces at least some certain amount of time off regardless of you know whether you want to or you don't everyone needs that to clear their head like you said and to make sure that they're at their best when they're working yeah yeah well i'll say this it, it certainly is a perk when when i'm uh, getting ready to hire and i'm in that that you know looking for great talent and having those conversations and it's it's definitely a perk when you look at benefits when you can explain the mindset behind it um, yeah i think yeah. Uh, when we go out pitching talent and you have to have all these bells and whistles to get the best of the best in your organization, um, having that unlimited PTO and being able to tell people that usually is a major influencer on the decision they make. Yeah. So we look at the other, uh, the other end of the population in our workforce today. What trends are you seeing when it comes to our seniors? Yeah, we're seeing a lot of seniors that that now are, are coming back to work, may have retired, or may just want to uh, work a little less, um, or may want to just be part of the, the group that, that's counted in working. Uh, we've had great success in uh, bringing the, the, the senior population back to the workforce. And uh, we have a great strategic coach here at Farben, a guy named John Anderson, who wrote a book recently called Replacing Retirement, and where he believes that you know, people don't necessarily need to retire or want to retire. Uh, they want to be able to do more in life, the traveling that they wanted to do, but they like to be able to come back and keep their minds active and, and stay in the industry uh, that they're in and that they loved, but just not as much. Um, or maybe with restrictions or maybe, you know, maybe they just still want to be respected for the contributions they've made. And so our company in particular has had, uh, has reached out to the senior community, uh, placing ads focused on, you know, retaining that workforce where they're not full-time jobs perhaps, or where we have full-time jobs, um, but, you know, we can't get the talent in the millennial base because it's fully working. So uh, we've been very active in that arena and have had great, great success uh, bringing seniors back into our company. Some of our best employees right now uh, brought their experience to our organization at a time when we were getting no responses to ads and just by you know reaching out to those that have experience and were trying to get to some balance in life where they can take more time off but still work um, it's been a really good outcome for us and we think that's going to be a continuing trend where full retirement is a thing of yesterday because if people aren't active doing something, their minds slow down. And, and I really do think that affects their retirement anyway, where it, yeah, in some cases, I think it can shorten your life if you're not active and you're not keeping your mind sharp. So I'm curious, when you look at uh, across our workforce as, as a whole, what do you find is a common theme that everybody is hungry for? Yeah, uh, today employees are really hungry for a number of things. Uh, continued education is a big part of it. And, and so at Farbman Group, we offer Farbman University, which uh, allows for classwork throughout the year. We offer usually 40 to 50 classes, of which our employees are required to attend four of those every year. Um, but it's in a variety of things. It could be completely related to what we do for a living here at Farbman. It could be courses on how to handle their own personal finances. Uh, tomorrow, we've got an event held by our strategic coach, John Anderson, who's are going to be teaching people about replacing retirement and that counts toward our course credit so uh, they're hungry for that and they're hungry for a lot of other things such as food on site that you give them um, we're big at keeping our snacks and usually healthy snacks stocked for our employees uh, we also have a, a shared refrigerator where we bring in meals for the employees every week so that those that haven't brought lunch or are just hungry uh, can eat uh, and they're looking for ways to de-stress. Um, so we do things like uh, we bring in a, a chair massage person every week so people can have 15 minutes of a chair massage and relax. Or 
uh, play ping pong or foosball or something to that effect. And so it's a variety of things that, that people really want. Uh, but today's workforce uh, is really looking for an employer that's looking out for them and trying to look out for what's best for them above and beyond all else. You know, everything that you're touching on really focuses on what what, what I would call um, what what does the new HR leader need to be mindful of? And you're I mean, you're just hitting so many great targets for us to to be mindful of and to consider. One other area I'd love to get your insights on has to do with employee reviews. What trends are you seeing? And and when it when it comes to leveraging what you're seeing um, to maximize. Uh, employee review or the process that you recommend, what does that look like? Yeah, so we, um, as a company, we replaced employee reviews a few years ago. And what we had found was that, you know, even if you're doing the right things and meeting with your employees regularly, at year end, you go through this review process where you rehash everything that went right, which the employee loves, and everything that went wrong, which the employee doesn't necessarily enjoy, especially if you're reminding them of something that happened in January and you're still going back to that in December, um, it, it creates this once a year negative area for your employees. And so we've, as a company, we've replaced that with routine meetings. Every supervisor has to, has to meet with their employees at least once a month and they go over strategic goals with the employee. They go with over their annual, their quarterly and their monthly goals and see how they're doing on that. Uh, they talk about challenges they faced uh, but they don't rehash everything over and over. And the worst thing, you know, it's it's like if you've got a, a fault and people keep reminding you of that fault uh, all year long, you're not going to enjoy spending much time with that. And so we've replaced it with like a monthly review with the employees, but a little less formal and a little less threatening. And so we've made it into a a thing where the supervisor says, not only what can the employee do better, but what the supervisor can do to better help them uh, with their role. And that's really important too, because it, uh, we always think if an employee's not doing well, uh, it's our job as leaders to make sure that they improve. And our, our goal is to never fire. It's to find ways to improve what they're doing and make them uh, into the employees we want them to be. And that's the challenge. But we find that re the review process itself is antiquated and doesn't really work in today's world. Yeah, and you've mentioned a couple of times a, a trust-based relationship and the trust in the in the workplace environment and expectations and almost the same thing. Really, opening up sounds like a, a more of a relational process between a supervisor and and direct report. Really, more of a conversational, trust-based relationship, um, which which again sounds very appealing. Uh, I bet you've got no trouble. Uh, attracting talent in your company well we're we're working on that it's uh it's still a very low unemployment uh environment so every day it's finding new ways to bring people in and as a company that's growing significantly yeah. uh, we really uh we're out every day trying to find ways to bring in great talent to our organization so yeah so i uh, i want to as we wrap up i i would love to know what are you learning? What's the book that is on your shelf that I need on my shelf that HR professionals at large would love to know? What is Andy Gutman reading? Oh, wow. That is a very good question. You know, I've always got uh, some book that, that I'm uh, reading at any given time. Right now, you know, I just finished the book. I keep talking about The Replacing Retirement, which I think is a fantastic book. And it's, it's obviously top of mind. Uh, for me, but uh, any of the books by Patrick Lencioni, uh, The Five Dysfunctions of a Team, is is one of the best for HR people to really read. Uh, but any of the Lencioni books are fantastic. And uh, I'm hoping in a month or two, you're going to uh, be reading a book by Andy Gutman called Putting Others First, A Servant Leader Story. I love it. Servant leadership. That's, that's like uh, that's what I'm about. So I will... I, I will have to go on to Amazon. Can I do a pre-order? Because I'm, I'm ready to do that today. <laughs> thank you. I will let you know when it's on there. It's coming soon. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you, Andy, for taking the time to share your experience and insights with us. And, and thank you, everyone, for watching. Don't forget to check out our archived episodes of HR.com Live. 
We release new episodes every day so you can stay up to date on all things HR. Have a great day. Cheers. Thank you for listening to HR.com Live. We have new episodes daily to help you maximize your potential. Be sure to check out our archives on HR.com and share it with your friends. Cheers.